This segment continues our discussion of bitwise operators, looking at the shift operators and related concepts. Our final two bitwise operators are left shift, less than, less than, and right shift, greater than, greater than, as illustrated here on line 15, for example. These produce a result by shifting the bits in their left operand to the left for left shift, or to the right for right shift. The right-hand operand, in each case, tells how many bits to shift. So, for example, the I left shift 4 operation on line 15 here produces a result by shifting I's bits by 4 to the left, as you can see in the table here. The uh, 1101 that was down here is now 4 positions up here, and the 1011 also moved up four, and so on. The top four bits of I are simply lost. They're shifted off the top end, so to speak. And on the right end, by the way, zero bits will be added to fill in. Now, given all that information then, especially the bit about the right end being filled in, fill in the last 12 bits in the table. Coming back from a pause there, you should have gotten is um, 1001, 0101, and then the four bits at the end filled in with zeros. Now, in the example, the I left shift, or right shift, I'm sorry, by six operation produces a result by shifting I's bits six to the right. It fills in zero bits on the left, and it loses the bottommost bits, which are shifted off of the right end. And again, the result appears in the table here. A little harder to work with since it's not a nice even 4-bit shift and therefore it doesn't line up properly with the divisions of 4 I did. But uh, you should be able to track what's going on here. We have, for instance, the 6 bits filled in at the beginning. And then the 0111. It would have been at the start of I is now down here as 0111. And so on. And again, Fill in the last 12 bits, please. What you should have come up with is like that. 1010100111. Now, shift operations are used to move blocks of bits around, to create dynamic masks, as we'll see in a bit, and for other bitwise purposes. But unlike the AND, OR, uh, exclusive OR, and tilde, they also have a mathematical meaning. So, question three, what mathematical effect on an integer's value results from a left shift by one bit? Assume that the nth value is relatively small. After a probably pretty brief pause here, you should come up with the fact that it's the same as multiplying by two. Each bit will occupy a position twice as valuable as it did before the shift. So the whole number will be twice as large. Now, if we end up losing bits off the left end, then the result is not so simple, losing one bits off the left end. So this applies only to reasonably sized int values. So then um, what about right shifting? Well, clearly that's like dividing by two, since each bit has half the value it did before the shift to the right. And it is a truncating division, by the way, since a one, if there is one in the LSB, gets lost. It's a little more complex than this when it comes to two's complement negative numbers, though. If a right shift adds zeros onto the left end of the integer to fill in, the result will be positive. So right shift does not equate to division by two for negative numbers, unless we change the way it adds bits on the left. The MSB must remain one to keep the result negative. So instead of adding zero bits, the right shift adds one bits, if the MSB is currently one, to preserve the negativity of the integer. This is termed sign extension, since the right shift fills in on the left end by extending the sign bit, whether it's zero or one. Assembly programmers will also recognize this as a right arithmetic shift. Now C's right shift operator extends, if, uh, extends the sign if the left operand is a signed integer, but always fills in with zeros if the left operand is unsigned. So the K shifted by 24 operation right here 
illustrates this. K is negative, and it is signed. So the right shift fills in with ones, as you can see down here by the result uh, that is FFFF80. If you want the simple fill in with zeros behavior, work with unsigned ints. If you want the mathematical effect of division by two, then work with signed ints. For instance, on line 17, we swap the two bytes of US by shifting it left 8 bits, which fills the bottom with 0 bits, and also right by 8 bits, giving a different result that fills the top with 0 bits and moves the top byte to the bottom. And then we OR the two together, and we'll get the two bytes in swapped position. As you can see from the output, what was B5CD now becomes CDB5. So, a question for you here. What would have been the result of this operation, given actual hexadecimal value, had US been assigned short instead of an unsigned one? And coming back from a pause there. You should have come up with the result, as you can see in the transcript, being OXFFB5. The right shift would have filled the top byte with 1 bits, because the original B5CD value is negative. Top bit MSB is 1. These 1 bits would then force a 1 bit result for the entire top bit, a top byte, I'm sorry, for the entire top byte, when the bit OR is done. There are strict limits on the value of a shift's right hand operand, the shift amount. You may not shift by a negative amount. Use the opposite shift operator if you want this. And you may not shift by more than the number of bits in the int less 1. So you can't shift a 32-bit int by more than 31 bits, for instance. Now, that latter limit is rather irritating. There are times when you'd like to shift by larger values, even if that means you end up with the original bits all shifted off the end, and leaving only zeros or ones in the case of sign extension. The underlying reason is that in many machine languages, the shift amount is embedded as a bit field within the machine language instruction for the left or right shift. And for a 32-bit machine, that bit field typically has just 5 bits, which is enough to count to 31, but not 32. Indeed, if you try to shift by 32 bits, the typical result is no shift at all, since the unsigned 5-bit shift value in the machine instruction overflows back to zero. The result of the uh, I left shift 32 on line 15 illustrates the point. As you can see down in the output, it left the result unchanged. It's the same as the original I value. So moving on to a new topic here. A fixed mask is easy enough to set up with a hexadecimal constant, like we did earlier for uh, OX7FO uh, up here. But at times we must build a mask from user input rather than using a fixed one. Left shift operations are often the best way to do this. Lines 20 through 21 ask the user to enter a bit number to set or turn on and a bit number to clear. And then line 22 builds masks for each of the specified bits by shifting one by the bit number. If bit one is six, for instance, as in our example input, then one left shift bit one produces a mask with a 1 bit in the bit 6 position. So question 4 here. Use the idea we've just presented and uh, earlier discussion on clearing and setting using masks and figure out how the expression on line 22 works and why the final output of it is the value here which is slightly changed from the original I value with one bit set and another cleared. And then coming back from a bit of a pause there, the expression bit or is I with a mask having a one bit at position bit one, just like we indicated, and that turns on the bit at that position. We take the result of that and we do a bit and with a 
mask that has a one bit in the bit two position, but is inverted. So in fact, it has ones in all but the bit two position and a zero in the bit two position. And so the and clears the bit at that position. Now, with a bit of clever subtraction, one can also create multi-bit masks via a left shift. Consider the result of subtracting one from a mask with a single one bit, let's say bit position seven, as shown here in the transcript. If you subtract one from that mask, what do you get? You get a mask with seven ones at the bottom and the rest all zeros. So, for instance, the expression one left shift by so many bits less one produces a mask with bits number of one bits at the bottom. Lines 24 through 26 use this idea, 26 in particular. They ask the user first to enter a number of bits on the right end of J to preserve. And then they shift by that many bits and subtract one from the result of the shift to create a mask that we can and with J to clear all but the bits that we wanted to preserve at the bottom. The last output line shows the result with just the 49 at the very bottom of J remaining.